Hello everyone, my name is Amir and I'm here to speak to you uh, about our paper called Rank Over Class, The Untapped Potential of Ranking in Natural Language Processing. So the, uh, the paper is already available online and uh, you can access the GitHub repository which is linked in both the paper and you can uh, follow the QR code uh, right here. So starting with uh, text classification, uh, which has always been at the forefront of natural language processing. It has always blazed the trail uh, in many different applications uh, when it comes to processing natural uh, languages. Amongst these applications, we could name a few, for example, sentiment analysis, online content tagging, then we get into uh, security, things like fraud and spam de detection, and uh, recommender systems for uh, many different, uh, in many different domains. However, text classification uh, suffers from a lot of issues. Uh, for instance, uh, we might encounter situations where we have ambiguity in text. It's not very clear what uh, the text is actually trying to uh, convey. It is subjective. We might have significant dataset imbalances uh, because obviously as humans we produce text that uh, might not, is not is not always uniformly distributed. Uh, we have potential unknown classes when it comes to natural language processing uh, and text classification. And uh, sometimes there are a very large number of classes which makes uh, simple classification an intractable uh, problem. What we propose here is text ranking, uh, replacing a lot of the applications uh, of natural language, of uh, text classification in the context of natural language processing. So starting with our proposed approach, what is the architecture? What is it briefly uh, that we are proposing here? So we have a, a model that consists of a transformer encoder and it contains a context aggregating multi-layer perceptron, which is a very simple four layer uh, MLP. Now we have two passages that will be passed through the uh, transformer encoder, the first sub network, and they're going to uh, produce uh, two feature representations that are going to be uh, concatenated uh, with each other and then pass through the multi-layer perceptron uh, which is going to produce the final ranking scores. We're going to have two values which we essentially are going to use uh, to rank these passages. Uh, essentially in this context if we have uh, y1 uh, larger than y2 then that means x1 is ranked higher than x2 and uh, vice versa. Now this is enabled using a um, very powerful margin-based uh, ranking loss function uh, that ensures the correct ordering of the passages and it has very strong representation learning capabilities uh, and it has been used in representation learning uh, applications uh, in prior work which enables us to uh, get a better more robust representation of the passages uh, with during the ranking process. So moving on uh, very quickly we can get into the experimental results and the most important part of the most important contribution obviously here. Now uh, we have experiments on uh, four publicly available data sets. We're going to go through them uh, one by one and uh, talk about the conclusions, the implications of uh, the results that we have gotten on each of these uh, data sets. Uh, we have experiments on the stack exchange data set. A uh, portion of this has been selected. We'll talk about that. Uh, we have the benchmark Amazon Fine Foods reviews data sets. Uh, we have a collection of uh, Twitter uh, tweets uh, from uh, based on uh, about uh, self-driving vehicles, the opinions of individuals on self-driving vehicles. This is a publicly available data set. It's already available online. It's not created by us. We are just using it as part of the paper. And we have the famous uh, information retrieval benchmark MS uh, Markle. So the first one, as we spoke about, is the Stack Exchange dataset. Now, the objective in this portion of our experiments is uh, to assess the quality of the posts. The posts in this context will be uh, question, will be answers that are posted in response to questions that are uh, uh, available on the forum. Uh, we have selected 250,000 posts for training and 50,000 posts for uh, testing. These are selected from six communities. Uh, from about from over 17,000 unique users and it averages uh, to about 20 posts uh, per user. Now uh, the ground truth 
uh, labels that we're going to use during our training and testing process uh, are going to be based on the votes that each answer has received, normalized by the votes that the original question had received. Uh, this way we have a more balanced uh, labeling process where uh, a very important question, a question that has received a lot of attention, is not going to overshadow less important questions because we're not measuring how important the question was, we're measuring how what the quality of the answer to that specific question uh, was. So a naive approach would be a text classification, right? We can train a classifier uh, on all of these based on these labels and see if we can, uh, this generalizes to our uh, test set. Now, uh, we use state-of-the-art classification methods, lots of powerful transformers, and as you can see in the results here, they essentially fail uh, because there is no context in this scenario. Uh, the models are just randomly guessing. Now, if we consider this, it's also very difficult even for a human uh, to do. If I have uh, three questions, uh, uh, three answers to three questions, without me knowing what the context is, there could be one, one answer could be about a, to a question about uh, a technical a question, the other one could be a more philosophical question. As a human reading these answers, it'll be very difficult to judge. And obviously, a machine learning model, a neural network, is also similarly going to uh, fail. So uh, what we propose here is we should have something called a contextual pivot point, something that it's a background, a backdrop of a context that is going to hold uh, the different uh, answers together uh, in order to provide a stronger uh, learning environment for the uh, model. So what we propose here is we group the post based on the user or uh, the question. So we're going to train a separate classifier for each group, obviously. Now, if that is, if we're going to do the classification model, meaning I'm going to, if, if I have uh, different questions, I'm going to have all the answers to this question and train a separate model for this. Or if I have a user, I'm going to train a different uh, model for all the questions from that user, which will lead to thousands, tens of thousands of models that is not intractable. Uh, the other alternative, uh, which relates to the work that we do, is to have a ranking model uh, that is going to receive pairs of passages groups by, grouped by these contextual pivot points, uh, whether they be the user that posted the question or the question uh, itself. So we can see the results here. If the contextual pivot point in this case, for example, is the user, uh, we have a test set of 100 users uh, with at least 100 answers based on ranking them. You can see based on the results here, we have metrics, uh, common ranking metrics. We can see we have performed uh, very well, very promising results. The model is able to accurately uh, rank all of these uh, passages. Uh, so instead of classifying them, we're just going to rank them. And uh, realistically, uh, we can we, we can tell that um, if the quality if the objective is to assess the quality of something instead of assigning a absolute value to it ranking all the passages relative to each other might actually be more useful and uh, more intuitive so our our approach can be used to track the skill level of users uh, over time so we we have a separate test set here uh, of 50 users with 20 answers with uh, unique scores and uh, by trying to, so here we have a sample, you can see a table here, a sample of these. And uh, when this is passed to our model, uh, our approach is able to accurately uh, sort these passages uh, just by looking at the text. No other information is uh, received. And uh, in our experiments, we had two simple mistakes and it can uh, basically uh, accurately track the skill level of any user over time. So as users post uh, more answers or read more uh, answers online. Obviously, over time, the quality of their answers are going to go up, which we can track uh, using our proposed approach. The next data set uh, that we work with is the Amazon Fine Foods uh, reviews. This is a common benchmark. Uh, the objective here is uh, to find the sentiment of a, a review that are posted by uh, reviewers, different users uh, online. There are about half a million reviews. Uh, these are about 75,000 products and posted by about 250,000 uh, unique users. Uh, the data set here is challenging primarily because it is unbalanced. Uh, we have higher scores, the uh, more positive reviews uh, being a lot more prevalent. There are a lot more 
uh, common. Uh, the ground truth labels are uh, from 1 to 5, 1 being the most negative and 5 being the uh, most positive. So uh, again, a naive approach, just like we had earlier, would be to apply a, a text classification solution to predict the sentiment, which uh, has been done uh, in previous work. Uh, we use the same state-of-the-art transformers to do this. Uh, now, obviously, they're using a lot. Uh, the, the, the results are better here. Uh, we have 20% of the data set aside for uh, testing. And uh, compared to the results that we saw for Stack Exchange, the models are not guessing at this point, but the results are still far from perfect. A lot is left. Uh, uh, we, we, can achieve, we can achieve a lot better, which is what we propose uh, our ranking approach uh, can do. So uh, if we form ranking with the contextual pivot point being the user and the product, so we, we can uh, group all the reviews based on the users that posted the reviews or based on the products the reviews are uh, about. So we have two separate test sets for these. We have the user best test set, test set which is 200 users with reviews with unique scores, so we can rank them easily. Uh, this is for the test set uh, and the product test set, which is 200 products with reviews with uh, unique scores. Uh, we are avoiding repetitive scores in the test set, so the ranking process can be done a lot more uh, easily. Obviously, in the training, there is no constraint in the training set. This is just about the test set itself. And as you can see, we, can, uh, we have very promising results. Almost perfect ranking is achieved. Uh, so pairwise accuracy is uh, at about 98-99%. So we have a very, very accurate approach, while accuracy uh, for the uh, classification models on the same data set would be about 60-70%. We are getting nearly 100%, uh, which is obviously uh, indicative of the power of ranking uh, when it comes to applications uh, such as this, which is obviously close to what humans do intuitively as well. Now, another interesting observation with this data set was that uh, user-based models converge a lot faster. So if we look at this figure that we have here, uh, the, uh, when we are training the model, uh, the user-based, the ones that the experiments that are run uh, when the contextual pivot point is the user, uh, is uh, it trains a lot faster, it converges a lot faster. And this is most likely uh, due to the fact that the writing style of the user is a stronger cue for the models to learn. So, which is a very interesting point, uh, we thought. Now, uh, the next data set uh, is the Twitter sentiment analysis data set. The objective here is uh, similar to the previous one, where uh, we're trying to find the sentiment of a tweet, in this case about self-driving vehicles, which is irrelevant to the work. Uh, we have, uh, it's a relatively small data set, there's only 6,943 tweets, uh, they are labeled from 1 to 5, uh, 1 being the most negative, 5 being the most positive. Uh, this this it set is extremely challenging as it is very heavily skewed. 61% uh, of the all, all of the data is uh, neutral, is in class 3, and uh, we have about 1% of the data being to the minority class, in this case the most negative. So it's a very, very skewed data set. And... Uh, now, what, what we're trying to, uh, what we, we're going to use this data set for is to be able to directly compare this against classification approaches. So we're going to try to convert uh, our results to a, to in, in a way that we can directly compare them against uh, classification techniques. So uh, as a result of this, we're going to create a test uh, set. It's going to be a balanced test set, uh, 100 tweets for each class. So we're going to have 500 tweets total in our test set. The remainder is going to be used for the uh, training set. Now we're going to convert the results of our ranking approach to class labels so we can directly compare them against uh, other uh, classification results. So how do we do this? We're going to have uh, all of the tweets in the test set and we're going to pass them to our approach trained model on the remaining on the training data set. And then uh, we're just going to uh, sort them. There is going to be no contextual pivot point here. We're just passing these and sorting all of these. So imagine the tweets are all sorted using our approach. Uh, then uh, we're going to divide the sorted tweets uh, into five segments from the top 
of the of items. So we have five segments and we're going to assign labels five to one to them, uh, essentially having uh, the top segment being uh, class five and uh, four, three, so on and so forth. Now, it is important to note that this is not necessary in any real world application. We don't have to do this in the real world. We're just doing this here to directly be able to uh, uh, compare our results in the ranking technique, results of the ranking technique with uh, classification approaches. Uh, obviously, as this is not a classification technique, we cannot use F1 and uh, metrics like area under the curve. But obviously, because it's a balanced set, accuracy is a good measure of what we can do. And uh, if we look at the uh, results, uh, apologies. Uh, if we could, if you look at the results, we can see that uh, our approach, when converted to classification with class labels, uh, is about 20 30 percent uh, better uh, than state of the art classification models. So, ranking is actually uh, outperforming classification models when directly. Uh, converted. Obviously, we don't have, as I said, we, we don't have to do this in the real world. Direct ranking output is actually uh, more useful in many applications. Uh, we also applied our technique to the MS Marco dataset. MS Marco is uh, specifically for information retrieval. What we do is not information retrieval, but uh, we uh, used our model, uh, we used this dataset to evaluate our, our model as well. Uh, our approach uses only less than 1% of the training data available because there is a very significant, very large data set available, uh, which most information retrieval techniques use. But we use only less than 1% of that, and we use the most basic form of the transformers due to hardware restrictions that uh, we obviously uh, faced. And uh, despite all of this, our approach is very competitive with state-of-the-art uh, information retrieval uh, techniques. So our model has been very successful even for tasks that it is not primarily uh, designed for. Now, uh, obviously there are certain challenges that still need to be addressed despite all the promising uh, results that our approach has achieved. Now, uh, ranking, while it is very suitable uh, to replace many classification solutions, it is not obviously a full replacement for classification. There are many problems such as uh, categorizing text by topic. Now, obviously, that cannot be ranked, so classification remains an integral part of the literature. In certain applications like sentiment analysis, uh, it might be more interesting to use uh, ranking instead. Ranking, obviously, as the word implies, is relative. It's not going to give us absolute results. So while we can say two passages, uh, well, we can compare two passages to say which is more or less positive. We cannot determine whether they're both positive or uh, negative. Now, this can be resolved using a self-correcting double-headed model, which can both classify and rank at the same time. Or we can use things like sentinel passages that uh, obviously are used to cue the ranking process. Uh, another future direction of work which we're going to explore is uh, replacing the pairwise ranking process with a list-wise ranking process which removes the post-processing uh, applications. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my presentation and uh, uh, I wish you the best.